this video will provide a brief explanation of what demultiplexing is in high throughput sequencing and why we need it. So as we've said before, high throughput sequencing is called high throughput because what it does is it sequences a bunch of different samples at once. So it's massively parallel sequencing. And what multiplexing is in high throughput sequencing, what it does is it's a process that allows you to sequence multiple samples at once while still keeping track of which sequences came from which individuals. So that's really important. So I'll walk us through this image here. So say we have two different samples, sample one and sample two, uh, one is in blue, two is in purple. When we're preparing our samples for sequencing, what we can do is use something called an index, or that's also called a barcode, which is a unique sequence of usually about six nucleotides that we can attach to our samples. So every DNA sample we have from sample one, for instance, is given this unique index one that has the nucleotide sequence CATTCG. And then every DNA sample from sample two is given this separate unique index or barcode that's AACTGA. So once we've attached those unique indices or barcodes, what we can do is then mix everything up. So pool all the samples together and then sequence them on that high throughput sequencer all together, all jumbled up. And so because they're all mixed together, what that means is when you get your data file output, which remember are just these strings of hundreds and thousands and millions of nucleotides, all of your reads from both samples one and two are going to be combined and mixed together. So when you initially get your sequencing data, you don't know which reads came from which sample. And that's where this demultiplexing step comes in, is this is what allows you to assign those mixed up reads to the original sample that they came from. So if we pick up here in this schematic with part D, demultiplexing, what demultiplexing is, is essentially using that unique barcode that we added to sample one and the unique barcode we added to sample two to separate out now the reads that came from each of those different individual samples. And then once we have that demultiplexing step done, then we can continue with the rest of the analyses like we talked about with um, RADSeq, for instance, where you're aligning these short reads and figuring out the regions of overlap. But you can only do that once you have this demultiplexing step done. And the demultiplexing step is so important for our downstream high throughput sequencing analysis because what you're doing generally in high throughput sequencing analysis is comparing two or more different sample groups or treatment groups. The data set we're working with this week is comparing uh, male and female garter snakes. This is actually an image. This, I think, is the female, and they have these huge mating balls where all the rest of these snakes are males, and they're trying to mate with her. But the goal of this study that was conducted at James Madison University is they were trying to see if the microbiome of the male and female snakes was different. So for the high throughput sequencing data that we're working with, which is from their study, we have to be able to separate out, separate out which reads came from the different samples, which is the male and female snakes, because that's the main question we want to answer. So this demultiplexing step is essential to be able to answer our research question. 